with journals, art journals, art projects, organized planner chic. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Organized Planner Chic. I'm Lucinda and if you haven't subscribed already, please do so and select the bell for notifications. Well, first I want to thank all my Patreon members who help make it possible to create videos like this. Well, thank you guys so much. And if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash organized planner chic. Okay, you guys, for this DIY, I did very minimal editing so it could be almost 100% real time and we could put these traveler's notebooks together, together. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to tell you real quick what you're going to need. You're going to need three Dollar Tree fabric placemats. They had two different designs at the Dollar Tree I went to. They had this one and they had one that was blue and green floral, uh, blue and green floral pattern, which I thought was super pretty, but I already have a blue and green floral pattern traveler's notebook, so I didn't get that one. You're also going to need some Dollar Tree scissors, and I got a second pair of Dollar Tree scissors, a really tiny pair that's super sharp to get really small spaces. I know some Dollar Trees might not have that, but you know, shop different Dollar Trees and have them call to see if another store has them. And also at Dollar Tree, sometimes everything is not in the same area that you saw it in another Dollar Tree because some things might be under the stationary area and sometimes they have it in a different area around like automotive and all that so you just kind of want to shop all around to make sure you're not missing out so you're going to need again those two pairs of scissors the placemats you're going to need some type of glue and I had advised two different types of glue just in case so I'm going to be using the little Mod Podge from Dollar Tree I actually have a little bit bigger size that I rarely see um, it's still a small one but it's not the teeny tiny size so I would get two for this project just in case and then the second glue that I'm using is a really good tacky glue called a craft glue and so it's not the kind that's like the gold in a bottle I mean in a gold bottle or that little one that's in the little white bottle that are both tacky glues but it's a, a, a shorter fatter bottle that says crafters glue um, that one I'm using if you don't have that you can try the other glue you'll see what I mean as we go along and then you know, the only thing not from the store that you're gonna need that you've seen in the video so far is some type of cord cardboard that you're gonna reuse so I'm reusing a uh, cereal box from ages ago because I don't eat Captain Crunch but my daughter used to and so I just use that to be my base to make it stronger plus I'm gonna have several layers of fabric you'll see and that'll help make make it really strong and then I have a template that I created a long time ago for different sizes of travelers notebooks and so I have that one there if you don't have one then just look up online the the traditional size for the traveler's notebook that you want to have whether it's a standard or a pocket or a a5 a6 b6 b6 slim all of those now they're not exactly the same with any business um, they range in sizes but they're all still pretty close to the same size with different companies so whatever you look up should work for any type of inserts that you want for that size traveler's notebook so I'm doing mine in an A5 and I'm tracing around the template. Now you'll see in a little bit that I didn't need to trace around the whole thing like this. Sometimes I forget about those little things, um, but I did and I'll show you how I could have done it in a minute. But whenever you're tracing, whether you're tracing the whole thing or just one side of it um, when you fold it, which I'll show you in a moment, you want to make sure that you kind of go back and forth on your tracing around your template that way you don't have to probably go back and you know see that you're off because your thing moved your template moved so I just set my cell phone on top of my template to help keep it from moving and then there it is trace but if you notice um, I had kind of lined up the template with where the box folds in the center 
trying to make sure I was lining it up the way I wanted but by doing that I could have just folded it in the center and just taken one side of my template folded that and just traced one side one half of it and then folded folded that and then cut it because that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut it the way that I didn't trace it <laughs> so I hope that makes sense I could have just laid one side of the template onto the folded cardboard traced that one side or one half and then cut around that okay so I am cutting around one half but I could have traced just around one half okay and then uh, that's another thing you're gonna need you're gonna need some clips to kind of hold your template still and I'm only gonna speed up I'm gonna speed up this little part oh I wanted to mention too even though my template was rounded I went ahead and drew traced it or cut it straight so I didn't cut around the rounded part I just went straight when I was cutting my templates are rounded because I used to make a lot of travelers notebooks on Etsy and a lot of them I stitched I hand stitched and the ones that I hand stitched I cut rounded and then I stitched around that rounded part but because this is all glued I want it to be straight for me because um, I just thought it would be easier that's the way I do them when I'm glue them. Glue them. It's easier because there's so much glue <laughs> that you've got to do around the edges in the end anyway. Um, so yeah, but that was just my mindset at the time. So I cut it straight. And then another thing that you need that I didn't mention is something to cover your surface, which I did not think about that this time. I don't know why, <laughs> uh, but I didn't cover it. So I just had to wipe up my extra glue and spills and things like that. Now, what I did a little wrong on here depending on your fabric now we're using Dollar Tree fabric so and it's two layers as you can see there's an outside and inside layer and so it didn't matter but if you don't want that cereal box Captain Crunch stuff to be showing through on the outside of your traveler's notebook then you want to put the glue on the inside part the plain part of the cardboard not the decorated part like I did so if you put the glue on the plain part then you glue that to the fabric then the decorated part is on the inside and so most of the inside is not going to be visible at all when we're all done with this project after part two so that would have been better so if you're doing this project with some other fabric then you would want to put the glue on the other side again in this case it doesn't matter and I think I'm going to speed up some of this um, painting of the glue no no I, I guess I didn't looks like it's about the <laughs> the same speed right here but yeah I just put the glue um, all around normally because I'm using Dollar Tree glue then I just squirted it around there but I have a huge thing of Mod Podge at home I bought like the biggest size you can buy and I normally just dip my brush inside of that big container but because I'm using the Mod Podge um, from Dollar Tree I just decided to squeeze it on there and then I'm just going to take my bone folder and if you don't have a bone folder you don't have to have that and that did not come from Dollar Tree um, then you can just use the back not the back but the handle part of some scissors not scissors <laughs> the handle part of a butter knife um, to do that to rub that or you can use the back of scissors to really press it down in there really well so here on this part the easiest thing probably to do because the sides aren't the same size if you want to cut diagonally at the corner which is what I normally do for folding in the fabric then you can cut around the all of the well not all of it but two sides of that fabric and make it all of the fabric outside of the cardboard the same size so you, as you can see this fabric is it's a rectangle and there's more fabric on the left and the right than there is at the top and the bottom and I couldn't really figure out how to cut at that ag diagonal at the corners with it being different sizes like that so I could have cut the fabric on opposite sides or yeah on the two sides to match the fabric at the top and the bottom and then cut it diagonally but that's not what I did because I wanted to do the least amount of cutting possible so you'll see in a moment what I did to kind of rectify that so I went ahead and glued the bottom and I used a different glue if you notice that was that crafters glue which is nice and tacky here it is again it's you have to cut the top with the scissors and it has a nice little built-in 
um, lid, snap lid, to that stays on there. Um, kind of gets in the way, but it is on there, and you, so you won't lose the lid, and that's an excellent idea. But it's a nice, thick, tacky glue. I did have my brush in water, so it gave it a little water to help smooth it out. It's not hard to smooth in any case, but, um, but it's real thick and tacky. And so I'm going to go ahead, and what I'm doing is really stretching that fabric as tight as I can onto that cardboard taking my time to make sure I'm getting it as tight as I possibly can so that I won't have any bubbles or wrinkles or anything in the fabric on the outside and then I'm just taking my bone folder to smooth it out and try to you know make sure that I get it on there as good as I possibly can so this is what I'm doing with the um, corners I'm just cutting that excess that's longer than the cardboard up to the cardboard and then I'm doing the same thing on the side of the cardboard just cutting out that little rectangle and I could have if I had thinner fabric or I was just working with paper I could have just folded it right over that and glued it I wouldn't have needed to worry about cutting that rectangle out but I didn't want it to be too thick on the sides I just felt like it would be too much fabric and um, to deal with so I did it that way and then I'll just cut you know the little excess that kind of sticks out sometimes and I'm going to do that all the way around and while I do that I'll just talk to you guys how are you doing I know a lot is going on in the world right now and I hope you are taking care of yourself and doing some things for yourself I know being inside all the time can be kind of feel like you know that's all you're doing is being with yourself but that's not the same as self-care so you know I hope you're doing things to encourage yourself um, make you feel like you're accomplishing some things. I hope you're doing a lot of crafts or if you just need to relax, I hope you'll, you're doing some bubble baths or facials or listening to music, learning something you've always wanted to learn, trying something new, whatever that is for you. And I hope you're still connecting too with um, people as best you can over the phone or Zoom. I like the Duo app on um, what is it? It's the Google. It's an app by Google called Duo. And I know we have Zoom that everybody's using, and we use that for some things too. But I really like Duo because with Duo, it is on your phone already. Well, it's, I had to download the app. That's true. Some people it might be on their phone already, but it's free and it's by Google and it just uses your contacts that are already in your phone. So you don't have to do anything. You don't have to set up a Zoom meeting or anything like that. You just click on the Zoom app and click on the person you want to call and they call them using the phone number that you already have. And they of course have to have the Duo app as well. But I really like it. I haven't had any connectivity issues with it like sometimes with Zoom where it freezes. And I do like Zoom for meetings a lot. It's easy to get a lot of people together and I think you can do that on Duo too. But anyway, so yeah, I hope you guys see what I've been doing as I've been talking. It's just the same thing on all the corners and doing um, the glue on there as well. And I hope it's working out for you guys if you're doing it with me. If you have any trouble with this, if anything is not flowing or something I'm saying doesn't make any sense, then please let me know in the comments below and I'll try to comment or respond to those to give you guys some tips so and I felt like cutting through this fabric was well at this point what I'm doing right here wasn't the easiest you know um, I use Dollar Tree scissors all the time like I have a pair here in my station for where I do journaling and my station where I do anything else uh, craft wise and then I have one in my go bag for when I'm on the go and I've never had issues with them uh, but I'm normally cutting through one layer of fabric at a time and this is two layers 
that are stitched together so I think that was what made it a little harder to kind of cut through um, the fabric to do that and it cut through it just wasn't like you know your quick easy snip 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 <laughs> so yeah so let me know if you have made any new crafts or done anything new creatively um, during this pandemic I would love to know what you have done I'd love to see it on Instagram if you're on there or if you're on Facebook let me know wherever wherever I can go to see what you've been doing I would love love that I have had some challenges just the longer it's gotten because I don't know some of you guys probably know if you follow my channel you know that I got a salivary a really severe salivary gland infection March the 6th was when I was first told it I started feeling sick March the 4th and I just got over it but two weeks or so ago um, and and so I haven't seen any person that I know personally since March the 4th actually was the last time that I saw anybody and and that's been hard it's been nice seeing people on apps like zoom and, and duo but even though I'm not a super extrovert like I work from home all the time but I'm still used to seeing people at church and at Celebrate Recovery. Uh, if you don't know, I, I go to Celebrate Recovery because I um, recover from PTSD. I got PTSD therapy intensive through the VA. I completed that and then I started going to Celebrate Recovery and then my husband and I lead that ministry at our church. So I haven't seen any of those people in person and I really miss everybody. Um, so right here, as you can see, um, there are some areas that needed just a little bit more glue and that tends to happen you know anytime you're you got edges so I just put some extra Mod Podge like on the on the edge wherever it needed a little bit so you'll need to do that make probably um, just check all those edges and see if you need to add a little bit more glue and then I just take the bun bone folder and you can take like I said scissors or you know the handle of scissors or um, the handle of a butter knife, you know, a regular knife that you have at the dinner table and use that to kind of smooth, put more pressure to smooth in that glue on those edges. There's a lot of glue going to be happening in this project because <laughs> you want to make sure everything stays and you don't have to be touching it up later on. But of course, if you do, you know, as you use things, maybe you will, but the idea is to make this a nice solid uh, project. Now also you could have combined just two, two um, placemats, two fabric placemats and use that solely or but it wouldn't have really been strong enough or you could put a, a polypropylene or vinyl placemat from Dollar Tree inside. Now when I used to make um, traveler's notebooks for my Etsy shop I did that a lot. I made them where I had fabric that I bought at the fabric store for the two outside layers and then in the middle was a placemat from Dollar Tree the, for the polypropylene uh, or vinyl depending on what they had at the store and then sometimes I would make them with uh, polyester batting inside when they wanted a soft traveler's notebook. So you could um, you know use that instead of cardboard or you could have like three or four things of fabric and now I'm speeding it up just cutting um, so it would be stronger what I was talking about uh, having a stronger one you just need more layers than just those two so I'm just going around and cutting the excess edges that are sticking out um, and making them nice and neat around there and now it's time to put some glue on the inside and I might need it to have put more glue than that even though it looks like it's a generous amount because I was used to again having my giant container of um, Mod Podge and dipping my brush directly in there and not ever having the brush in any water until it's all done and so but I'm going to show you I brushed it all went all around the edges and put it in there And then I'm going to put the other layer of fabric, so I'm going to have the green part showing up this time, so we can have some contrast and we can see, you know, both aspects of this placemat. 
And so I just had to kind of maneuver it. I wanted to get it as close to the edge, that left top edge as possible. And because it's nice and neat, and it's got the stitching on there, and let the trim be the bottom and the right side. And you know, I just had to move, maneuver it so you'll kind of lift it and smooth it with your hand, or you can use the bone folder. I used my hand for this part to try to make sure we don't have any bubbles because we do have two layers of fabric so that it'll be as smooth as you can get it and you'll be happy with it. Now again, the inside part is not really going to be visible at all. Um, not much at all when you're all done and you've got inserts in there. And so, uh, but still, you know, <laughs> you don't want it to look too bad because you are going to see parts of it. You don't want to see some big old wrinkled bubbly part. So just take your time, but don't worry about it being perfect. Just do the best you can and then just move on to the next part. Okay, so then I'm just taking my bone folder, and again, you can use your scissors or your butter knife and just smooth it out as best you can. Yeah, that looks pretty good, Lucy. I do overdo it <laughs> with my bone folder because I just love it. I just like the, I don't know, it's something about that pressing down smooth movement that I find, I find therapeutic. So... Now, I saw that some areas were still not solid, and this is even, this is even after I set it outside and let it dry completely. Um, I don't remember if this, at this stage, if I had already done that or if I had just put it all together and, and put the glue on there. But, um, but that fabric on fabric, for some reason, even though I did extra, as you can see, I put the extra, I just did that. I put more glue. That was definitely quite a bit more glue, put it around the edges. And for some reason, the fabric to fabric did not work. And I didn't pay attention. Let me look. I got the bottle right here. See, it's still not sticking. This one is um, Mod Podge Matte Water Base. This one doesn't say, yeah, use on all surfaces. It's the kind I always use, but for some reason with that fabric, I it would not stick on the fabric to fabric. It would, of course, the fabric to cardboard, but on the fabric to fabric, it would not adhere. And I had to use the other glue. Thank goodness I had <laughs> the other glue, which worked really well. I did not have any issues getting that to adhere. And so I just used the brush to help smooth it. Um, again because it's a thick glue it's a wonderful glue um, I'm not sure why that wouldn't stick so at first I thought well maybe it's because I didn't put enough glue on the fabric to fabric the first time but then you know I, you saw I went back and put more glue on there and there were some areas some little sections I think you'll see later that did still adhere but for the most part it did not adhere the fabric to, to fabric did not work with the Mod Podge, so I'm not sure why that was. And it, and I don't think it's because of, you know, maybe I got some old Mod Podge or maybe I got some defective Mod Podge because it worked just fine from the fabric to the cardboard. So I, I have no explanation. <laughs> I, I just don't know. And it might be the, the well, I was going to say it might be the texture because the texture is definitely, you know, um, I don't want to describe it well I mean it's fine it's just it's a woven texture but I've done use Mod Podge with lots of canvas and of course canvas is heavier so I don't know I don't know <laughs> but anyway I'm just going back and using that crafters glue and uh, spreading it all in there yeah so no I haven't done anything new you know I mean I've I haven't learned any new skill or anything. I haven't done any new types of craft. I mean, not really. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm always doing something creative and new in terms of what I'm drawing or materials that I'm using. But, I'm, and I do have a broad range of interests where it comes to arts and crafts. So I've been doing some of all the many things that I already do, but I haven't like done something like, I don't know, 
ceramics, which I haven't done since I was just out of college. So I haven't done anything in that respect. Uh, but Zoom is Zoom is definitely new. <laughs> um, but I can't think. And Duo using Google Duo that's new. But in terms of creating, I've just been doing. I guess I could say I've been doing a lot of of what I do. You know, I've been using a lot of my supplies, more of my supplies than I used to. I've been to Dollar Tree more than I used to as well. I've been going to Dollar Tree like every week to see what new craft stuff they have because they have such good stuff now. I'm really impressed. Like this crafter's glue is amazing. And again, every Dollar Tree is not the same. The, the Dollar Tree that's closest to where I live does not have that crafter's glue. Um, and they don't always have that awesome double-sided tape that I like to get at Dollar Tree. But the one that's equidistance from my house, but in a different direction than the other one, has tons of stuff. So yeah, so everything's dry now. I sat it outside and let it dry. And so I am cutting the excess off of that one side because everything else is lined up. Oh, I think I cut it at the bottom too. Or I'm getting ready to, I haven't done it yet. You can see there. So I'm cutting the right side excess and I just suggest that you angle your scissors just a little bit, you know, turn it a little bit to the right as you're cutting. That way you won't wind up with still a little bit of excess fabric sticking out because that then that becomes harder to trim neatly. Um, and that way it'll work out just fine. And even if you cut in a little bit too much into the fabric on the inside, no one's going to see that. But you definitely want to make sure that you are not cutting into the side of that fabric, you know, where you've got that nice neat edge at the end um, all around the outside because then you'll have like a little hole. <laughs> so I suggest really, really taking your time to cut that and if it's not perfect, it's no problem because we're going to use these little scissors. Now you can use your big scissors, they just don't work nearly as well for me for these little small edges and these tiny scissors of course I also got from Dollar Tree and again I don't see them all the time in fact when I went to that one Dollar Tree that I told you I find lots of these nice crafting supplies they didn't have them this last time that I went so um, I got them a time before and uh, but if you happen to get a chance to get them get them because they're really really sharp not dangerously sharp, you know, don't, I don't want to scare you, but they are um, nice and sharp to trim edges and not get all wanky like sometimes the big ones do when you try to get a small area. So it's really, really, um, really nice to be able to trim that and get that. And you know, I guess you really wouldn't have to do that. I mean, well, no, I suggest you do because later on when we put glue all around the edges of the whole project, which we'll definitely be doing that a few different times, um, then maybe you could cover it up. But I feel like when I have edges sticking out and then I go and try to put glue to lay it down, it just looks messy. And then sometimes those little sticky edges just get hard they don't really lay down so what we're doing now is taking that real nice tacky crafters glue which it gets harder to get out by the way as you use it even though I still later on I think in part two had like 25% of the glue still in there it was hard to get it out and so I learned later on to have the bottle laying down horizontally because then the glue came out a lot easier even though that was the case, still when I got down to about 20, 25%, it was still harder to get out. But um, up to that point, I started laying it down, um, laying it down so it wasn't standing upright. And then I was able to get the glue to come out a lot easier. So what I'm doing right now is just putting the glue on the edges, um, not just the top edge of where I trimmed, but that whole side, all around all four sides, and then I realized that sometimes I squeezed out too much glue because I just needed to do a smaller amount because I could just spread it with my fingers. Now I don't mean just putting a little bit just in one spot, but maybe I could have skipped around a little bit and smoothed it out. There you see me trying to get the glue out. Um, so I didn't need to put it on as thick and I think later as I went on, I stopped squeezing out so much kind of right here too I stopped squeezing out quite as much 
um, so I could spread it around. Yeah, and it's going to be so nice when we're all done because everything is laying down super nicely. And like I said, later on when we add the pockets, because we're going to have pockets, um, we're going to smooth everything out. We're going to add glue, of course, to put the pockets in, but then we're going to put glue all around the edges again because we're going to have some new edges from putting in those pockets. And yeah, I just used a little damp rag to wipe up the excess on the other side because I wanted to make sure that it didn't look um, like glue, dry glue was on it. So like here, you can see that there's some dry glue, but that's totally fine because no one is going to see that. I promise when it's all said and done and everything is finished, no one will ever know <laughs> that there was dried glue on that inside fabric. And the outside fabric, because it's the way it's made or the material and then the print, it, even if any little glue got on it, you it didn't look bad or it doesn't look bad. You can't even see. Now sometimes, because the glue is spilled over, you'll see when it's all done, there might be like a really, really super thin, 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 thin layer of glue on a couple of spots and you can just take your like thumbnail, your fingernail, and just scrape it off really gently and it won't ever look like that but you really can't you have to kind of look for that because that won't even be the case when I was all done I didn't have anything to worry about it all looked perfect like I bought it in the store y'all <laughs> that's what I like okay so did I get all the edges and then sometimes you know you might have an area where you kind of need to squeeze it a little bit um, depending on how well things adhered earlier and I think I might have done that on this last time yeah but thank you guys so much for joining me today I hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and like and comment and share it helps my channel out a lot check me out on Instagram at organized planner chic to see all of my pictures of my creative ventures and adventures and be sure and just tag me if you do any of the things that I do in my videos I love to see your creative work I have two Facebook groups the local one is called Phoenix Planner Friends for Christ and there we do uh, meet in person normally but right now we're doing lives and just posting a lot more we normally meet in person once a month and then the one for anyone around the world is called Organized Planner Sheet crew again that's the other Facebook group and there we do giveaways and we try to stay in touch just about every day with all different types of posts and if you're interested in supporting me on patreon just go to patreon.com slash organized planner chic and until part two happy planning